Good evening, welcome to 100% LCFC. My name's Phil and this is our weekly Monday night fan zone show at its new slot of 7.30 where basically I'll just come on here and chat nonsense with you lot to see what you all thought to yesterday's game. Pretty decent, pretty decent game. Leicester looking good. 5-0 winners over Newcastle. Get your views in, get your comments in, let me know what you thought was good about yesterday. Don't think there was anything that was too bad about yesterday, to be fair. Um, Dennis Pratt didn't come away with an injury, as far as we know, which was great. Um, let me know by your comments what you thought about the game. And, perhaps more importantly now, let's turn our attention to what's going to happen on Saturday, 3pm, Anfield. Can we go there and get some points? Uh, you write your comments down. I'll react to it. I'll give you shout-outs, whatever you want. Jordan Williams saying it's shocking. It could have been 7-0. I've got to be fair with you, Jordan. At 2 0 down, we sat and chatted amongst the people I'm sitting with, and we said we were starting to play how many is it going to be? Is it going to be four, five, or six? I think I thought it was going to be five or six, and in the end, it was five. Uh, Millie Singh, good evening to you. Andy Medhurst uh, saying, Hi, it was a boring game, fell asleep last night. Come on, Andy. I know you're just joking. Uh, John Shipley got a great question here from John Shipley says, Who does Madison replace on Saturday if he's fit? Great question from John Shipley there. Who does Madison replace if he's fit? Get your comments in. I want to know your views on it. I'll give you mine in a minute, but I want to know who you think. Should Madison come straight back into the team? You know, a winning team, albeit against a very poor Newcastle side, but should Madison go straight back into that team? Let me know what you think on that. Neil Bennett, hey, up to you as well. How are you? Scott Neve is saying, I reckon we'll beat Liverpool. Great positivity from Scott. Imtiaz is saying, yesterday's win was good. However, we're not playing the excitive, exciting, incisive attacking football that we should be. We're going, let's, I'm just reading here what he says. Imtiaz, uh, I'm going to disagree with you a little bit there, Imtiaz. Let, put in the comments what you think to Imtiaz, Imtiaz's comments. Fair enough to say that, Imtiaz, but I think we are exciting. I mean, I'm not giving Newcastle any credit for yesterday because they were poor, but I think Leicester City... Again, I had a chat today with Mark, a guy called Mark, went and met him from Tor Waterfield. Hi, Mark, if you're ever watching. We were discussing this, and we were saying, we actually think this Leicester side, and you can put your comments in here, but we said, we think this Leicester side, man by man, is possibly better than the team that won the Premier League. Do you agree with that? Put your views in, put your comments in. Is That's a question I'm going to ask you. I was chatting with Mark earlier, like I said. Um... Is, if you go through the Leicester's players one by one, are they better than the, the players we had in those positions during the Premier League season? That's a big debate because, you know, that team went and won the Premier League. If this team can get anywhere near that, we're going to think they're good. But, crikey, that was, that was what we were debating with. Chris Forian from Leicester Till I Die. Good evening, Chris. Hope you're well. Hope you're doing all right. You've had a bit of a dodgy ticker. Um, Chris says, great win. Bring on the Scousers. Thanks, Chris. And don't forget, go and follow Chris and everything that those guys do over at Leicester Till I Die on their fantastic group page as well. Always chatting over there. Gray Richardson says, good evening. Jason Clare saying, what a great score. Ernie Simmons, good evening to you, Ernie. How are you? Thanks for joining me, those of you who did earlier when I was right in the centre of St. Peter's Square in Leicester. Wanted to know your comments. Uh, Gray Richardson, good question here, saying, would it have been the same scoreline if they'd still had 12 on the pitch? Gray, do you mean 11? If they'd only had 11 on the pitch. Um, do you know what? I think we'd have still given them a good beating yesterday, even if they got 11 on the pitch. We were, we were well on top. But, but when their guy did that ridiculous tackle, it was just stupid. Stupid, stupid tackle. And the fact that he didn't think it looked like it was a foul, just crazy. Uh, by the way, if any of you... I can add some of you in to this as a video chat. If any of you want to be added in as a video chat, and the system will let me. Some of you it will. I can see some people allowed to. Um, I'll add you in. You can chat. You can come on screen. Give me your views. Give me your comments. Let me know. So if you do, just put in the comments, add me, Phil, and I'll add you in. Jordan saying, depends how bad the injury is. Nice to see him on the bench, if not fully fit. Jordan's talking about James Madison, obviously. Uh, Harry con is saying, this is Harry Chetwind, saying Pr Dennis Pratt is better than Madders in his opinion. Now, let's open that out. Harry's asking that. If you think, who do you think is better? We've not seen much of Dennis Pratt. 
But if you think it's Madison, give me a like. Give me a thumbs up, likey. If you think it's Dennis Pratt, give me a heart. Let's see, because I can see those on my screen. I know you guys can. So if you think Madders is better than Dennis Pratt, do it that way. Does that make sense? Heart for Dennis Pratt and a like for James Madison. I can see some starting to come up already. So thank you for those. That's three or four, five, six, seven likes coming up on the screen. I've not seen anybody do a heart. I've got to be honest with you, Harry. Just my opinion. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Dennis Pratt, but I can no way say he's up to Madder's overall quality just yet because I haven't seen enough of him. A few of you are going for Dennis Pratt, which is fine, which is very interesting. He obviously is a Belgium international, Harry, so, hey, we might just have another gem on our hand. Quite a few hearts. It's a bit mixed there, but I think generally more for Madison. Uh, Gray is correcting himself on it's only 11 players on a pitch. Well done, Gray, for working out how many players are on a pitch. Well done to Gray. Sean is watching. Hi, Sean. How are you? Didn't see you at the game yesterday, Sean. Probably because it was piddling it down and we were all too wet. I don't know about you. I made the stupid decision not to take a coat yesterday. What an idiot. I was absolutely... I was wet all the way through to me lucky underpants, I tell you. Um, Harry is saying we'll finish third this season. Big prediction from Harry. Brett, good evening, Brett. How are you, Brett Coombs? Come on. Don't give us too much nonsense tonight, Brett. What are your views on Saturday? Don't forget, if anybody wants to be added in, just say, add me in, Phil, and I'll add you in on the on the video call. Uh, Sean Culpin is saying, good evening. What a great game. Yes. I actually think the Spurs game was better than the Newcastle game, if I'm honest, from a Leicester's point of view, because I think Newcastle were a bit like slams to the lottery and just gave up. But I do think we set a bar there with Spurs, and I've... Just hoping that we can do it this Saturday against Liverpool. I think if we were to go there and get, well, to get a draw would be a big statement because Liverpool, I think, are 14 games on the spin winning. So to stop that run, I'd like it to be Leicester. Anthony B was saying, even though Newcastle were poor, we looked really balanced, absolutely better by far, man for man. Um, talking about, are we better man for man than the Premier League winning season? I think that it's an interesting one. Uh, Imtiaz is saying Tielemans is prone to too many mistakes. The guy needs to fix up. Yeah, I, I mean, Imtiaz, I think, sli slightly on the negative there, Imtiaz. But I'll give you, I, I don't think we've seen the best out of Yuri Tielemans. That, although yesterday was probably probably one of his best performances this season, I thought, for Yuri. Uh, Chris Forian saying more exciting than under Puel. And yes, better than the Premier winning team. Or has the potential to be. I think that's the thing. Chris has got it there is... We can't judge this team yet, but I just think if you go through it man for man at the moment, you'd sort of go, you know, Casper was there in both, uh, Sionku and Johnny Evans compared to Wes and Robert Huth. That's an interesting debate. Obviously, Chilwell um, over Fuchs. I think we still argued that one at the moment. Who is better this season, Chilwell or Fuchs? I think Chilwell is edging it at the moment. And then Ricardo Pereira over Danny Simpson. I I think probably Ricardo would would edge that one and that and you can go on and on through the players. So it's a great debate. Get your views in on it. Anthony B is saying this team is a lot more skillful. Uh, Harry is asking, what do we think about the Till Emmons new chant? Yeah, heard it a lot at the Luton away game, but didn't hear it much at the Leicester game. Atmosphere was better yesterday at the King Power. Do you agree with that? Chris Butterley is saying, let's destroy Liverpool's undefeated streak. I totally agree with you. We don't want Liverpool to win this, do we? We want to have another go at winning that. I, I, you know, I'm starting to think we've got a sniff this season. I honestly do. I'm not out of it yet. Pete Hydes is saying, this team, the 2019-20 team, is better than the 2015-16 team. I think like Chris Forian said, the end of the season, we might be able to have that debate properly. We really might. Even if we don't win the Premier League this season, I think you can have a good debate on that. Can't just at the moment, because they haven't done anything yet. I think that's the thing. Uh, Luke Charlton is saying, oh, he's replying to Imtiaz. He's, he's saying, were you at the game or watching it from an armchair somewhere? It was, it was a near-perfect performance. Listen, I, I hear what Imtiaz is saying. It wasn't... At the first 15, 20 minutes of the game, Newcastle, you know, were creating chances... I think the stats show we had five shots on target yesterday. I think I'm right in saying that. And obviously got five goals. Neil Bennett is saying this is the first points drop for Liverpool this weekend. I, th I think we will. I've just got this feeling that we're going to go and get a draw. At least. Maybe I'm daydreaming thinking we might get a win. 
Uh, Andy Price says, get Madders back in definitely if he's 100%. So you would drop, I think you'd drop Dennis Pratt, I guess, Andy Price. But he had a good game. Good game, good game. I told you no more impressions. Um, if you can like and share this video, everybody, please do that. Help us. Facebook algorithms are going like... They're not like it's their unlikers. So it's really not helping us get our content out to everybody. So if you can like and share the video, thank you very much. Uh, Jason Clare saying, I agree with that, Phil. The thing is, Liverpool and Man City have improved. I still think we can get something at Anfield. I agree with you. Anthony Beebe is saying, with 11 still, 3-0. Oh, he's talking about if Newcastle had 11 players on the pitch, how many would we get? I think, I think we were on for a win yesterday. Regardless, Anthony Lindo, I'm good. How are you? Thanks for watching. Please like and share, Anthony. An evening to John Squires as well. Uh, Brett saying, Brett Coombe saying he was very impressed with Dennis Pratt. Certainly was. How are we going for it, Brett? Is it Pratt or Pratt? Let me know. Uh, Luke Charlton says, Matters comes straight back in, to be honest. Dennis Pratt played well, but he's, he's no Matters. That's Luke saying that. Do you agree with Luke? What do you think? Do you agree with Luke? Would you put Matters straight back in? I think by looking at all the the likes and hearts, there was a good few hearts in there for Dennis Pratt. A lot of people very, very impressed with what they've seen from him in his cameo against Spurs. And we saw much more of him against Newcastle. But generally, I think people are going for Madison. I think I'd go for Madison. Imtiaz saying he was at the match. I know, you, I know you're at the match, Imtiaz. I know you always go. Um... Chris Butterley is saying, add me. Let me see, Chris, if I can add you. If I can add you. Let's just see. It's not letting me, Chris. I don't know why. I can't add everybody in there, but for some reason, it's not letting me add you in, add a, uh, Chris Butterley. If anybody else wants to be added in, I'll try. I'll try. It's, it's uh, just one of those systems, Chris. It is Facebook, not me. Anyway, Lewis is watching Lewis King. What did you reckon to the game? Brett is saying Pratt is a different player. Madder's much more attacking, but both extremely talented. How do you squeeze them all in together? That's a question. How do you get Tielemans, uh, Madison in there and Pratt? Is the fall guy perhaps Perez? I thought he had a decent game yesterday, Perez. Still waiting for some moments of magic, I think, from, from Perez. What do you think to him? Um... Got some good boos from the Newcastle fans. I thought it was a shame he didn't score. There was goals galore yesterday. Um, so it was a shame that that Perez didn't get on the score sheet. I'm sure he'd have celebrated, to be fair, if he had done it in there. Uh, Alex Green, good evening, Alex. Thanks for watching. Saying Dennis Pratt is a more attacking player, but Madders has more magical moves. That's a good analysis there, Alex. I agree with what you're saying there. Lewis King, good evening. Adam Bramley, are you watching? Yes, you are. Good to see you. Uh, Chris Allen saying, can't we just have them both? Can we not just have Dennis Pratt and Madison? Chris, you can have them both in there, but you need to tell me, how do you set up that midfield? Who comes out? Is it is it Perez drops out? Who is it? I thought Albrighton, you know I'm a massive Mark Albrighton fan. Love Mark Albrighton. I thought he had a fantastic 20 minutes when he came on. I'd still have him starting. I really would. I really would have him starting every week, but... Did himself no problems at all yesterday. What a cross. I mean, Jamie Vardy headed that ball in, but that was all about the cross. Just sensational on a on an absolute sixpence for him. Uh, Jordan is saying, we haven't seen much of Dennis Pratt yet to really comment on what it is, but what he's seen, he looks promising. Uh, Mick Bell, good evening, Mick. How are you, Mick? Hope you're well. Mick says, brilliant game. Confidence should be absolutely sky high for Saturday. I think you're right, Mick. Are you going, Mick? Have you got tickets for Liverpool away? Let me know if you have. Be great to know if you're going. Paul King is saying, good evening. Uh, it's Paul King here. OK, wow. What a game. Yes. OK, wow. Paul's obviously excited by yesterday. Steve Hinks is going for pizzas. Pizza emojis. Guess what, Steve? We actually have got a couple of pizzas to give away. Do you know why? Because nobody predicted Pereira and 5-0. Well, not as far as I can see. I've scoured all the predictions everywhere. And I can't see anybody's gone for Pereira and 5-0. So I will be giving some away tonight. If you can like and share the video, that's only going to help. Thank you. Um, loads and loads of comments going through. I am scooting through. Wow, so many comments tonight. That is amazing. Thank you for that. 
I'm go I've scooted right down to the bottom comments to try and catch up live with you lot. Uh, Richard Adams is saying he's going to Liverpool. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. Really, for those of you not going to Liverpool, what a shame it's not on TV. Of all the games they've been picking on recently, Liverpool, Leicester, well, perhaps at the start of the season, they did not think that was going to be a top, top, top clash. But I tell you what, it's going to be very exciting. What, perhaps more exciting, I could argue, than when Leicester go to Southampton on a Friday night. Cheers for that one. Mind you, I felt a bit sorry for the Newcastle fans. So, Leicester on a Sunday at 4.30. Some of them were start. They were saying how great the supporters were yesterday. I've got to be honest, there was a fair few hundred of them left on about 55 minutes. So I'm sure, much as everybody's saying Newcastle fans are amazing, there was a lot left as well because we sit quite near them. Will Holloway, good evening to Will. How are you? Have you posted that shirt yet, Will, to the winner of the signed shirt? This is my little brother who raised, we raised... For the Leicester Royal Infirmary Neonatal Award, £425 from the shirt. And then Will did a barn dance and raised, I think, over 800 quid. So, well done, Tim. But, Will, make sure you send the shirt off to the winner. Uh, Mick Bell is saying he's fine, but not going to Liverpool. Worst luck. Uh, Paul King is saying, I hear you're scared of the dark. Yeah, I don't know where you heard that. Keep to the football, Paul. Keep to the football. Chris Forian is saying we have more points now than at the same stage of the season when we won the league. Hashtag just saying. I know, Chris, I know we, we are. We are actually doing better than the Premier League winning season. As Ranieri would say, let's just get to that 40 points and see how quickly we can get there, maybe, Chris. Do you agree? Karen Marino saying, I can win the pizza this week as I'm in town this week. I gave mine last week as I won and I live in USA. Karen! Did you go to the match yesterday? Don't tell me you were in Leicester and we didn't manage to meet up with you. That would have been brilliant. Did you go to the Newcastle match? Mind you, if you'd have come to find us before the game, you'd have found a very drowned me and Simon and Heather, who won the tickets from Jamie's show, The Fox's Arms. Um, so you'd have just seen us very wet. By the way, Jamie's asked me to point out to any of you, any of you trying to escape the horrible weather in England this week and going to Alcudia, he is going to put on a bumper event on Saturday. He's looking for loads and loads of fans to come down to the Fox's Arms in Alcudia and watch the Leicester game. He says get there early because he is expecting a big, big turnout, obviously, with it being Liverpool. Uh, Will saying, Brother Will is saying, yes, he sent the shirt today. Thank you, Will, for doing that. Alan Jones is saying it's on Swedish TV, which is great, Alan, if you're in Sweden, isn't it? Not so good. So good evening to all the Blue Army Sweden guys. Will's telling us he raised 923. You guys helped raise a lot of that, so thank you very, very much. Tom's watching. Tom, how are you? Let me know, Tom, if you want to come in on the video chat. I'll add you in. Good evening to you, Tom. What did you think to the season so far? Uh, Gray Richardson saying Pereira to score first. Beat Newcastle 5 0. Pizza. It's about 12, oh, about 24 hours too late, that one, Gray. But it's a good try. It's a good try. I'll give you that. Uh, Fearless Fox's strike again. Uh, Jordan says he is going to Liverpool. Jordan, do you want to do a bit of away fan reporters? I'm always looking for more fans to get involved with 100%. If you're watching this, and you probably know you can do a lot better than I can. So Jordan, if you go to the match, do you want to take some photos? Do you want to take some video? Do you want to do some reporting, some fan chatting? Be great to get you on board. Always like that. Uh, Rudy Ahern. Hi, Rudy. Out in Cyprus, Rudy, part of the City Force on tour. I believe, Rudy, I'm right in saying that. Did you get your prize, Rudy? You won the book. Great win, says Rudy, anyway. Good evening to you. Ross, Ross Howard is watching. Ross, many, many thanks for that uh, totally unofficial, it never happened, live stream from Luton Away by Ross uh, Convici Howard. Hi Ross, thanks for that. And Ross has sent me a video which I need to post. I will post it, Ross. He's done a new song for Madison. I'll pop that up after this. Uh, Rudy's saying it's 30 degrees in Cyprus. He is out there. I knew it was you, Rudy. Um, Chris Forian saying, to be honest, even under O'Neill, I was always thinking, hope we can just stay up this season. That's got to be fair with you, Chris. I just think it's another season. We're already looking like, I'm excited because we already look like we're going to stay up this season. How good is it to be seven... A lot of you won't realise this, but for us older older fans, seven games in to be thinking we're safe in the Premier League, is exci I'm excited by that alone. 
does that get you going, anybody? Uh, Kerry, good evening, Kerry Rambridge, saying Ricardo is brilliant. I agree with you, Kerry, and I'll tell you what, if you check back to the pre-season videos, we were saying that Ricardo had had the best out of everybody's pre-season and looked really, really good. Um, Imtiaz saying a draw on Saturday will be brilliant. I agree with you, Imtiaz. Do you think we can get it, though, Imtiaz? I think we certainly can. Alan Jones is saying that he's the lucky fox. Well done, lucky fox. What do you think? Lesson is saying, yes. What do we think the score will be against Liverpool on Saturday? Get your predictions in. That's the start of the pizza for next week. Buy our pals at pizza. Um, what do you think the score is going to be? Uh, get your predictions in. Uh, Russ is saying he'd love to get involved. Love to get doing some content for us. Russ, absolutely brilliant. Yes, you're on. We're already direct chatting, Russ, so that's fine. We'll get you chatting on that. James Hill is saying, wonder what odds you would have got on Ricardo and Leicester to win 5-0. Yeah, yeah. I reckon, James, you'd have got very high odds. Anybody seen the odds? The odds were for Leicester to win the League Cup 12-1. to 1. I think they've been cut now. I think we're down to 8-1. I was chatting with Mark Jarvis about that. So, worth a little punt even at 8-1. to 1. We were talking about earlier on in the chat, we were talking about what are the odds for Leicester. I think the odds for Leicester to get a, a draw, I think the draw was 3-1. to 1. I think it was the draw. Terry, good evening. He says, Terry says, a quick in and out, ready to watch the mid-table clash, Man United v Arsenal. Yes, Terry, that's on at eight, isn't it? Mid-table. Uh, I was listening. I love listening at the moment to, the, it was uh, Talk Sport, it was. Oh, was it Radio 5 Live? Anyway, they're just doing an interview um, with some ex-Man United players. And they were genuinely saying that Man United this season are not competing with Man City and Liverpool, that they're, they've got to try their hardest to try and finish higher than teams like West Ham Wolves, and they said they'll struggle to get near Leicester, they were saying. So, interesting to see that. Uh, Ross Howard is saying we're only 150 to, 150 to 1 to win the league at Betfred. <sighs> Not 5,000 to 1 like many of us. Uh, do you know what? October that year, in the 2015 October, I went down the pub with a load of mates and we were having a few beers. This was in uh, Corn, and we all we were talking about putting a bet on. We all said, "Oh, let's just chuck a fiver in. Let's chuck a ten tenner in each. We'll split the winnings." We checked the odds. It was seven hundred to one, and I was there. I'd, I've admitted it before. I was there going, "Oh, it's just not worth the tenner." Oh, I wish we had seven grand. That would have been nice. Didn't do it. I don't care because we won it. I'd rather win it than the seven grand. I don't care. And I thought if I bet on it, I'll put the hoodoo on it. So I always bet on Leicester. If I'm going to bet, I normally bet on Leicester to lose. Because I think if I bet on them to win, that's never going to happen. That's just superstitious. So I actively go and throw money away, hoping that we win and I lose my money. Anybody else do any stupid lucky things to try and get a, a Leicester win? Imtiaz is saying, if we buy a top striker this January or next summer, we can definitely go for winning the league next season. Imtiaz, I think that's an interesting point, and I want to know your views on that. Kelechi Inacho, now he scored against Luton, and um, honestly, that was Luton's B-side, and they're like, not doing that well in the championship, are they? Why did we not, and I'm not being picky or bitter or anything about yesterday's game, because it was perfect, it was great, but should we have given Nacho 20 minutes at the end yet? Yesterday we were 3-0 up with 20 minutes to go. They were rubbish. I would have... Uh, I'd have liked to see Nacho come on because he could and should and maybe would have got a goal yesterday. And I think that's only going to boost his confidence to come and get a Premier League goal in front of us all at the King Power. I think that would be nice for him. But didn't want to go on. He didn't want to go on. Um, Gray Richardson saying Nacho's found his level playing down at the bottom of the Championship. Come on, Gray, give him some support. Uh, Steve Hinks is saying, agree with the betting, never bet on City. Well, I never bet on them to win. Talking of which, we are, we are doing a new thing. If you listen, must listen to Lee Chappie's um, podcast this week. It comes out sort of Wednesday, Thursday. Got a great new app on there that we're playing around with um, where we all, we all have a bet between ourselves sort of thing. Lee will explain it much better in his podcast, so watch out for that. We've already had a go. Me and Lee have had a go. We've predicted like Leicester's score and a few other scores out of the Premier League. You lot can see if you want to beat us on it. You probably will because me and Lee don't get it right that often. 
Uh, lesson three is saying we need a winger like Florian Thavin. Who's he play for, Lesson? My European knowledge is not that top, top. Let me know who that is. Uh, Alex Green is saying, I thought we would have seen Nacho come on as it got to the point where we were 4-0 up and all the players were having fun. Yeah, I, I agree, Alex. I thought, I thought it was an ideal opportunity for Nacho to come on yesterday and give him a chance. I'm, again, I say, I'm being a bit picky. Uh, Imtiaz is saying he really wanted to see Nacho get the last 20 minutes yesterday. I thought it would come on when he started warming up. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure why he didn't come on. If, if you're honest, Nacho hasn't come on this season when we were 1-0 down and we needed a goal. So he didn't put Nacho on in that game uh, when we were away at, at, for example, Man United. He didn't come on. And then when we were 4-0 up, 3-0 up against a, a rubbish-looking Newcastle team, he didn't come on then either, which is... A little bit strange, a little bit strange. Um, before we get too far long, I'm not sure what the time is, but I need to give away two pizzas to somebody from our pals at Peter's. So what shall we get you to put in the comments to win the pizzas? What do you reckon? Um, I'll tell you what, if you can like and share the video, and then in the comments, put a comment um, about... Well, let's, let's get your comments in for score predictions for Saturday and put a pizza emoji next to it and I'll pick somebody who's done that, put a score prediction in and put the pizza emoji in and we'll give away the two pizzas that we didn't give away this weekend because nobody went for Ricardo and 5-0, as far as I can see. If you did, send me the link and I'll see it. Uh, Chris Florian says, if we had to keep one and it was Nacho or Slimani, which one would it be? Well, Chris, you tell me which one would you have picked? I would have probably, I would have picked Slimani, if I'm honest. I would have picked Slimani because he offers something a bit more. But we've kept Nacho, but I'm not really sure why. Chatting again earlier today with somebody in town in Leicester, and we were saying, we are still worried, and I've said it before the season, still worried if Jamie Vardy was to get injured, what the plan would be. Because it, it, it clearly isn't Nacho, because he doesn't come on when, when we're short. When we're winning, it doesn't come on when we're losing. It doesn't come on when we're drawing. It only comes on when we're winning away at Luton. So I'm, I am, if it's something that may just be the difference between us and doing super well this season, it could just be if something happens to Jamie Vardy. Fingers crossed, he stays fit. He's definitely on form. He's definitely on fire. I think this is, do you agree? Is this the best you've seen Jamie Vardy? Is this, is Jamie Vardy better now we were talking about players like for like is, you know, for example, it, it, you know, is Danny Simpson, was he better than Ricardo Pereira? I, I'm personally going to say Ricardo Pereira is better. Is Jamie Vardy 2019 version better than Jamie Vardy 2016? I think he is. I think Jamie Vardy is better now than he was then. Do you agree? Let me know if you agree with that. Keep getting your comments in. Keep getting your views in. Lewis is watching Lewis Ellison. Thank you for watching. Hope you're well. Uh, Chris Forian says, we have Perez, but I think Slimani can be recyc re recycled, recalled, I think, is what you mean, uh, in January. Yeah, but I guess Perez is a striker. I'm not convinced, though, that he is a striker. I know, I know in the squad he's down as a striker. I'm just not seeing it. Didn't get much of a sniff. I know he's playing out on the wing. Uh, Alex Green is agreeing that Ricardo is miles better than Danny Simpson. I'm not having a go at Danny Simpson at all. Not having a go at Danny Simpson. I just think Ricardo is crikey. If he carries on like this, somebody like Barcelona will come knocking for him either in January or in the summer. I'm not sure. Uh, Anthony B is saying Vardy 2019 not as fast but a lot more intelligent. I I think I I agree with him as the fact that he is more intelligent now. Do you know what, though? I think he's just as fast as 2016, Anthony. And I think he's more hungry than then. I think he's more enjoying his football than then. I think he, he probably knows that he's not got long left. And I think he's just loving every minute of it. If he carries on like this, could go, could well be out wanting to play for England again. But it's doing him well not. Not going, because we've got another international break in a week's time. Vardy can just rest up. Uh, Imtiaz is saying, yeah, Vardy is better now than before. Andy Medhurst is going for a score prediction, 1-1 one, one, and Vardy. Don't forget, if you want to go for the pizzas tonight, put a pizza emoji in if you can. Uh, Rudy is saying Vardy looks fitter and hungrier. Good. Rudy, has that book come yet? Your prize you won the other week about Leicester City. 
Uh, Lesson is saying we should have bought Hallier. Haller, sorry, am I saying that right? Instead of him going to West Ham. West Ham looked decent this season. West Ham could be our competition, couldn't they? Uh, Imtiaz is saying in 2016, Bardi was definitely faster. I don't know. Well, definitely, I would say he looks hungrier now. I really would. Scoring plenty of goals. Uh, James O'Connor is saying Vardy trains so well that he will keep his pace and scoring ability until he's 35-36. <laughs> uh, Ross, Ross Howard is saying, where is my pizza for the Luton stream last night, love? Yeah, Ross, trust me, you're in the mix now because you put a pizza emoji in. Not many people have tonight, so Ross, at the moment, you could well be in there. Um, I want to get the last few comments in there. Uh, Anthony is saying pizza box what thing name Madison Anthony do you want to reword that into a sentence that makes any sense uh, Mick Padgett is saying looking for a couple of tickets for the Carabao League Cup uh, against Burton uh, yeah, looking forward to that I don't know if they announced the uh, TV fixtures for that round That's I know the trouble is there's five Premier v Premier games which they'll no doubt pick even though I think they're as boring as anything because you get them in the Premier League every season I'd much rather see a lower level team. It's got everything that game, Burton against Leicester. It's got previous history. It's got the location that this is this is our closest derby at the moment. And the fact that Burton have got nothing to lose against Leicester, who, who really have got more to lose, I think it's an exciting tie and should be on TV. But I don't know if they've picked them. Um, keep getting comments in. Steve Hinks has done 28,000 pizzas and then said 3-2 to City. Uh, Jordan is saying no, he recorded his fastest pace in pre-season this year. I thought he did, Jordan. I thought his stats from pre-season were the best he's ever had. Uh, Paul Bird is saying would love a 21-year-old Vardy. Well, I tell you what, this 32-year-old Vardy is pretty good. Uh, Mick Padgett is saying, am I invisible? No, Mick, you're not. Have I missed some of your comments? Keep putting them in, though, Mick, if I've missed some apologies. Uh, Gray Richards saying 2-2. Salad score first. Oh, Salah. Mo Salah. You've written salad. You mean Mo Salah. Come on, Mick. Get your comment in and I'll read it. I'll find it for you. Um, Chris, you're welcome. Chris Forian, keep the comments coming in. Uh, Chris Hand is saying, Bards will put defenders away to make space for others because they're terrified of him. He certainly is frightening them at the moment. Uh, Ross Howard is saying, it will be an emotional burden away. It's a few days after the one-year anniversary of Vichai's death. Yes. Poignant moments there. Don't forget the Vichai, the walk for Vichai October the 19th is on and we're all going to be doing that. Don't forget if you've not as yet sent your photo over to, we've got a group which is called 100% LCFC Fans Mosaic. We're trying to take all your faces, all your selfies that you send in and we're putting them all together to make one big picture of uh, Vichai which we're going to be taking on the walk. Hopefully we're going to make a big banner, take it down, take it to the ground. So... We want as many Foxes fans on there. I think we've got a 1,000 photos so far, which is great, but there's 30,000 people who go to the King Power every week. There's thousands more who can't get there for whatever reason or far-flung Foxes. So if you can, send us a photo, and you can still be part of the walk whether you're there or not. Uh, Phil Scotting is going 2-2 with a pizza. Mick Padgett is saying 3-1 to Leicester win. Got you there, Mick, with your pizzas. Well done. Joanna Astley. Hi, Joanna. Thanks for meeting up yesterday. Still trying to persuade you to come on camera, Joanna. You've got to come on. You talk the talk when the camera's off. And then as soon as we turn the camera on, she runs away. So we need to get you back on, Joanna. You've done it before. Come and do it again. Uh, Andy Medhurst is saying, I just love a... Tw <laughs> I've really got to read your comments, Andy, before I just blurt them out loud, haven't I? I really have. <laughs> Cheeky monkey. Nigel Holmes is watching. Good evening, Nigel. Um, Mick Padgett is saying, how come Ricardo's not in the international squad? I don't know, Mick. I don't know. Has he not been picked for Portugal? Uh, lesson 3 is going 3-1 with Leicester win and pizza emojis. Uh, Joanna's saying, am I late or are you early? We're at a new early slot now, Joanna. It's 7.30 every Monday. We've changed it. I've got to make it earlier. I have to go and pick my daughter up from guides. Is that right for guides? So I have to make it earlier. Sorry about that. Uh, Daniel, and it gives you a chance to chill out and watch whatever's on at 8.39. Love Island. Tom, Tom Hogan obviously loves Love Island. Daniel Fox is saying, slab head looking soaked already. Are they, are they losing yet? Man United. John Shipley saying, the space that Vardy created for Ricardo's goal was brilliant. Yes, saw that on Match of the Day too. 
Got to be fair with you, John. I didn't notice it in the game live, but yeah, Vardy makes a fantastic run. Takes two of their defenders away and opens up for Ricardo. So well done on that. Um, Dale is saying that, Gianna, you're late. And Jason Clare, again, Jason, I was talking about that just today. Are we ever going to get a statue for the boss? I agree. I think we need, we are lacking in a couple of things like that around our ground. There's the two or three things on that. I'm going to start with one. I'm going to start with one is, why is there a Gordon Bank statue at Stoke and not Leicester? I don't quite get that. He played for Leicester just as much as Stoke. And he won the World Cup while he was at Leicester. Why have, why have Stoke got a statue of Gordon Banks? And why have Leicester not? That's one question. Why have we got no statue full stop of anybody? Don't know. Why have we not got anything particularly? If you look at the ground, if you look at the King Power Stadium on a match day, if you look at it yesterday, where does it say we won the Premier League in 2015-16? I don't want to hark back to it too much, but... There needs to be something down there, if you ask me. There needs to be... I, I can't even see one of these. If I was a club, I'd have one of these in the in the club shop or somewhere. There's, there's like nothing. And I'd have a Ranieri statue. I think that needs discussing. And I think Vichai, obviously, needs a statue. I would like to think the club are going to at least get the Vichai side sorted. But a statue of Ranieri, for me, definitely we should have one. Anyway... Last couple of comments before I pick somebody who's done the pizza. Uh, Chris Forian is saying, damn, just beat me to the bank's point. I don't get it, Chris. I do not understand why Stoke have got a statue of Gordon Banks and, and Leicester haven't. You know, great, great player, won the World Cup while at Leicester, and yet Stoke have nabbed him. You know, and you could say that for many mothers. I'd love to see a whole wall of statues of former foxes, something down there to... I used to love it when we had the inside banner in the ground and it had ex-players in there. I thought that was great. And I, I understand why King Power have changed it to put the branding in there, make it corporate. But it is lacking that bit of history down there on a match day. I'd love to, you know, take, show some of the younger kids who come there and go, oh, look, that's, you know, such and such, there's such and such. Be great. Be great if there was a museum there. Maybe us fans need to do something. Uh, Chris Tigerhand says the boss needs a statue. Uh, John Shipley saying there's too many legends in the club to pick for a statue. Let's have a load of statues. Let's have a load of things. Jordan saying I think there will be a statue of Vichai outside the new arena. Yeah, I think there could be. And Stella Waraka is saying De Ranieri definitely deserves something. I agree with you on that. Jordan is saying, I think we'll need a statue of Vichai, yeah, outside the arena. They're going to build. That's great. Listen, I'm going to scroll back because I think it's gone 8 o'clock. I've lost track of time. I've been blabbering on too long with you lot. Let me pick somebody at random. I'm just doing the finger of picking like this. So thank you all. And it has randomly gone on Phil Scotting. Are you still watching, Phil? I'm just going to type on you. I'm just typing you one there we go you won phil scotting predicting two two and a pizza well done you've won now before i go we are trying out lots of new content a lot of it is on youtube and we're going to be telling you to go we're still going to do all the live stuff on facebook but we are doing more shows on youtube so go and find leicesterfantv.com and there you'll see links to the youtube channel that's probably the easiest way to do it to find anything to do with leicester fan tv go to the dot com and find us there so from me phil thanks for all your comments i'm going to give a few cheerios before we go but thank you to everybody who's been watching daniel fox just akin by statue it would fall over, Dan. It would fall over. Lesson, good evening. Say goodbye to you. Uh, Chris Hand, goodbye. Um, Jason Clare, good evening. Goodbye, Stella. Goodbye. Jordan Williams, John Shipley. Anthony Beebe. Keith Goodall. Mick Padgett. Oh, Mick, can't, can't forget you. Chris Borian from Leicester Till I Die. Uh, Jake Short. Everybody. Karen Marino. Karen saying she'll be at the Blues Bar on Saturday. We'd love to meet up with you all. Arrive in Leicester Wednesday morning. Blues Bar. I don't think Blues Bar have got the match on though, have they, Karen? You never know. Murph behind the bar there is a Liverpool fan. 
Mind you, he doesn't mind telling everybody. Listen, thanks for watching. If you can like and share this video, really appreciate that. Chappers is live on Wednesday, 8 o'clock, plus his Fox in the Box show is on YouTube later on that night. The podcast is out on Thursday. The kit room is out, again, over on YouTube, and Neil will go live on Facebook. Jamie from the Fox's Arms is live on Sunday. And you never know, Ross Howard... Who was it who said he might do some away stuff for us at Liverpool? Was that Russell or was that Jordan? One of you anyway. Hopefully be live from Anfield for us. See you at the match on Saturday. If not, I'll see you next Monday night. Goodbye.